This is Caleb's version of a black match machine. Back in the 1980s, the best of AFN2 came out with uh, a version, an article about a version of a machine made by the, uh, what, the blaster pastor or something like that. Um, and uh, so the idea behind such a machine is not uh, completely new. Dave F. has posted a nice video of a nifty homemade machine he made to make black match. This is Caleb's version. String goes in here, goes around these rollers as I'll show in a minute, and comes out here all joined together through one of these hole, these sizing holes as a completely coated uh, black match strung up on drying racks. Rather than using a, uh, oh, a cake baking pan, a baking pan or anything like that, which allows excess match to come out around the machine, I've made a plywood tub that the machine just fits into. Um, the sides of the plywood tub are as high as the frame on the match machine, except this one side here is a little cut a little bit lower so that the match as it's being pulled out of the machine doesn't drag across it. This keeps all of the black match slurry inside the match machine frame. When I made the tub, I did glue the joints well before it was all screwed together, and then I've sprayed it heavily a couple times with some spray lacquer to make it waterproof and make the joints uh, leak proof so that all the slurry stays in the tub and doesn't damage the wood. I have spent a week or so sort of fine tuning this whole system that I'm using with Caleb's machine starting with the switch to the plywood tub that the machine sits in uh, in order hold all of the uh, slurry right in the machine frame going to this uh, jig or rig that uh, the plywood box sits down in held securely I've got a wire that goes over this and secures on the other side to keep that from being pulled up out of its place the uh, spools that I'll be winding the string on are half inch OD aluminum tubes, six inch long. These fit over three eighth inch uh, aluminum rods that I have recessed in this angled uh, bra wood brace bracket. I found that angling the spools was necessary to keep the string from grabbing on top of the uh, wound up string a uh, clump on the spools as it's being pulled off. It's better for the string to be pulled off into the machine at basically about a 90 degree angle to the spools. This whole rig sits on top of an old wagon so I can drag it down the uh, way as I'm winding, uh, as, I'm, as I'm making black match. And so that's what that whole rig looks like. I do give the rods that the spools ride on a little bit of a shot of dry lube to uh, ensure that they turn really, really easily. This is just a dry lubricant. The string I like to use is a four strand cotton string. Uh, it, it's thin enough to pull nicely. There's not so many strands that it won't absorb the slurry. It really sops up the slurry nicely. And I find that six strands of this, equaling a total of 24 of these thin strands, pulled through the 1 8 inch sizing hole in the machine, makes a really nice 1 8 inch match. To uh, wrap the, each individual spool of string, this half inch OD tube fits nicely in a half inch drill. I attach the um, string with just a little square of masking tape to the spool. And I have found that uh, building this up to about one and a half inch diameter will uh, allow me to pull about 200 feet of match 
Um, as I'm going, I get gradually smaller and smaller and smaller with my wraps working my way in toward the center. The string tends to grab out at the outer edges, but it won't do that if each successive wrap is inside the previous one just a little bit. If as I'm wrapping the string on there, I run across a knot in the string, I discard that whole wrap. A knot will, will grab in the machine and won't pull through and the, that section of string will break. So I don't mind losing a couple of hundred feet of string. Sometimes there is a, a knot or two in one of these uh, cones of string. A two by four is an inch and a half um, thick. So I'm just trying to build this up till it's about the same thickness as a two by four. I didn't, I came off the end there just a little and that could create a knot as I'm pulling it right there. Like I said, I went a little farther than the uh, outside wrap there so I took that off and now I just want to keep those getting smaller and smaller. So there's a wrap an inch and a half thick. that on here. I put all the spools onto the here going off the same, coming off the spool the same direction. I'll repeat that another five times and then I'll be ready to thread the string into the machine. So I've got all my spools of string loaded. This is the orientation of the box and the matchmaking machine in the unit. The cutout in the plywood box is down at this end. The holes where the string goes in are down at the end toward the spools and the sizing holes are here. I will fish the strings through the holes in this aluminum bar one at a time. The goal is to keep these strings from being twisted around each other as they go through the machine so I'm keeping everything in good aligned sequential order as I do everything I'm doing here. Since I'm using six strings and there's 11 holes, I'm putting a string in every other hole in that aluminum feeding bar. Put a piece of masking tape across here and I sort of tape that down at the two ends temporarily. Then I lay the strings across that masking tape in the order they're coming out of the aluminum bar. Caleb taught me how to thread this machine the easy way using this method. Then I put a piece of tape across the top of that like that, making sure the strings are really <clears throat> thoroughly embedded in there. Now I cut the ends off of the tape. And I also cut, the cut about a quarter inch of the tape from this far end here. So the strings are nicely embedded in there like that. The strings go under this first roller underneath the aluminum bar. They go clear across the bottom, up around this far bar, down through the two bars that are close to each other. That those two bars that are close to each other sort of mash the uh, 
slurry into the string is by if I turn the rollers that feeds the tape right through and in between them then that tape comes up come on baby there we go up around this bar here going down around it wrong comes across and goes under that bar there because the goal is to come up from around that bar and then up through the sizing hole I've got my 1 8 inch sizing hole marked on this bar it has sort of a funnel side to one side that's the side the string goes through cut the strings and feed them up through that one eighth inch hole starting going through the funnel end of it now I can visualize this watch it as it goes the strings are feeding through the machine nice and evenly and there's no twists in it but this one string down here is around the end of this bar so I want to bring that string and get it away from get it I don't want it twisted around the end of that bar like that I want it to come through free there we go now all the strings are going through the machine nicely and none of them is around any of the ends of those Delrin rods and I just tie a loop here which will be my attachment point to my drying rack when I start pulling the string through the slurry so I've put my whole loaded rack onto the wagon I'll be pulling the wagon from this end the string end and I'll just wrap my wire around the whole machine here to keep any of that from pulling up as I'm pulling the match. Now as I'm pulling the match, if there's any tension on it, it can't pull the machine up out of the box. So now I'm ready to load slurry into the tub and the machine. This is 700 grams of screen mixed or lightly ball milled for a half hour commercial air float 4% um, dextrin 1% CMC and the rest is a regular 75 15 10 black powder powder mix it's a fairly slow burning coarse mixed you know, every, all the ingredients are fine but it's not ball milled ultra fine composition uh, that's 700 grams and this is 630 grams of water that's 90% um, water by weight to the composition. I have found that a load like this will uh, coat about 200 feet of match made with the six strands of four strand cotton match, cotton string uh, through the one eighth inch sizing hole in the machine. This makes a slurry that's about the thickness of uh, stirred yogurt stirred sour cream it'll just pour um, but it's fairly thick it's not like milk it's not even like heavy cream it's more like um, like I say a stirred yogurt or a stirred uh, sour cream makes a fairly thick slurry I'm making sure to get the dry powder out of all the corners out of the tubs and I'll stir this until it's good and thin or I'm sorry good and homogeneous homogeneously mixed good and even consistency so that's a real nice even consistency it will pour uh, but when if I dip my spoon in there and pick it up 
it, that's not really dripping off the spoon. So that's a nice uh, thickness that'll pull very nicely through the machine. Much thicker than that, it tends to start to clump in the machine. Much thinner than that, it doesn't leave a nice thick coating on the match string as it's pulled through the machine. So that's about where I like it right there. Nine, I found 90% water using this commercial air float charcoal. Works very nicely. I've got two of these uh, racks for my um, drying rack, my, uh, my support rack uh, as I'm uh, making the black match. I've got two of these, one on each tree that are about 25 feet apart. So each run back and forth pulls about 25 feet of the match. Okay, if you'll go back up a little bit and focus on this now. Now I'm going to pour about, I want right from here, Molly. I'm going to pour about half of this slurry into the machine. I want it full enough to be coating completely the bottom rollers in the machine, but not so full that it comes up too far on this top roller here where the match is being pulled out of there. And simply pulling, starting to pull the match through it evens that coating out on the bottom of the machine. You can see how it's the, the bottom roller is as the string goes around is really coating the string and as it's and also the strings being coated as being pulled through the slurry and then it gets mashed between those two rollers at this end that really mooshes the uh, slurry into the string. I find the string is really soppy um, once it's coated and I want excess slurry to be pulling up, being pulled off as it's being pulled through the sizing hole too. And then if you show this up here Molly, I'm just going to hook this on one of these hooks here. And this is pulling a nice round 1 8 inch match out of the machine. Now Molly, you'll stand here and follow me. I'm pulling fairly slowly. I want the, the string to be nice and completely coated. I can see that the individual strands are nice and coated as it's coming through the slurry. And I'll just pull this kind of slowly down to the other tree that's about 25 feet away. Can you see how the rollers are unrolling as it goes now? Yeah. Okay. Good. I don't want the slurry so full that the bottom of the slurry comes up and hits the match as it's coming out over here, otherwise the coating gets uneven and a little bit too thick. Okay, now I'm coming down here to the other tree. I want to pull this alongside the tree um, so that I can grab it, grab the match. You step back over here now, Molly, so you can get this in the picture too. I'm going to grab this about as far as the other tree is, pull out the excess. I want to loop around one of these hooks, go around again to sort of secure it there and again, and then that's secured at that length. Now back up Molly so you can see how I swing this whole machine around. Focus on the machine while I do this. And then I just lift onto the rear wheels, pull the whole rig around, which just swivels it around nicely. And now I'll walk slowly down to the other end. Every now and then, as needed, I'll add a little more of the slurry in here. As I get to the end of the slurry or the end of the uh, 200 foot run, the slurry starts to get a little low in the bucket. I could have made up a little more slurry or if I just pull it slowly being careful to observe that the match is getting completely coated that works fine too. Now an alternative of course to the uh, even that out just a little bit an alternative to using the string in it 25 feet between the trees method of a drying rack is the traditional rectangular frame on a central pivot 
that's illustrated in Best of AFN or lots of other folks' videos and photos. Um, that allows you to roll match onto a drying frame, a rectangular drying frame, say four feet by six foot central pivot and uh, let that set aside. What I will do, this is a nice dry uh, warm day, it's going to go up to the end of the 60s today with some wind. I'll let, I'm doing coating this in the, early in the morning. I'm going to let this dry all day, then I'm going to cut it off into two foot lengths, which is what I typically use, and I will uh, put it in a drying screen, put it in my drying box for a day, after which it'll be completely bone dry. But it'll be pretty darn dry by this evening when I cut it off the, uh, from between the trees here. Okay. Now, every now and then I do reach in here, and the slurry tends to pile up over here at this end between these rollers. I'll just even it out a little bit as I'm doing this, even it out on that section of string. And just keep going till I've got as much pulled as I can off these individual spools. One of these spools looks like that one's a little smaller than the rest. One of these spools will end up running out first, at which time I will just uh, tie the match off to the nearest hook and call it quits. The excess slurry can be mixed with dry black powder powder to uh, make pulverone screen granulated, make pulverone filler for shells. Um, there's not going to be that much left. Sometimes I just hose it out real good, make sure it's good and diluted before it's spread out on the ground um, and just uh, figure that's the waste part of the process. But it's not a bad idea at all to have some dry black powder powder um, set aside to mix this excess slurry with to make some pulverone at the same time. That way you don't have any waste in the process at all. If I do run out of string or slurry in the middle of one of the 25 foot runs of match, I keep an extra ball of standard string and a pair of scissors in my pocket. I just clip off the coated match put a loop in the end of it and uh, tie the regular string onto it and then bring the regular string down to one of the hooks and tie it off so I don't have to waste a half run of string. You can maybe see how even though it comes out of the machine as sort of a coated round 1 8 inch diameter um, piece of black match the string does continue to sort of soak up the moisture and you can see the individual strands of string in there but it dries into a very stiff piece of match where I can hold out a good 12 to 18 inches of it without it sagging down and it burns very consistently. And this is a couple hundred feet of the match cut into two foot lengths and put into a drying screen in the drying box. Match dries nice and stiff and uh, burns very consistently. I'll air dry it for the rest of the day after I coat it out outdoors and then cut it and put it in the drying box for a day after which it's completely bone dry. And then once the match is completely dry from the drying box I just roll it up in a piece of paper. I have two hands. Roll it up in a piece of paper. I'll secure that edge with a piece of masking tape and uh, put that in the magazine for use. It's a nice bundle of a couple hundred feet of uh, matches, about a hundred pieces of two foot long black match. It's really a satisfying product to be able to make and it's getting harder and harder to get black match and quick match so being able to make it's a real advantage. So you use the black match then in a piece of quick match, make a piece of quick match or a shell pat for a shell leader, let's say, or a shell pacifier around the side of a shell. I like I do like to use two strands of the black match just to be on the safe side. And um, I just shove them into a 3 8 ID hand-rolled paper pipe. 
And what I'm going to do in this particular case as a demo, I'll put a piece of black match going in one end and a piece of black match going out the other end. The first end for ignition, the second end to show when the quick match has burst and passed fire. This quick match will burn instantaneously. And here's how that quick match will burn. So that passed fire instantaneously down to the other end. To clean up, it's just a matter of hosing everything out real good. The trees here get fertilized very well with all that potassium nitrate. I make sure that all the sludge is well, well, well diluted. Cleaning up the machine is just a matter of hosing everything off and also hosing the ends of the delvin rods while turning them from both sides. That washes all the sludge out of those gaps around those rods. So I'm doing that from inside and outside, turning the rod while I hose the end. No need to disassemble the machine or anything. That gets it good and clean.